part two of how to build resin kits. In this video, we're going to be talking about the actual cleaning and painting and finishing up with this Giver kit that I've done. Hopefully last week's video got you along pretty well in your own project and this week's video will help you to finish it and hopefully get you the results that you're looking for. So right now it's on to giving this resin kit a bath and a paint job. What we're going to do right now is clean these parts and all that I've done is taken a little piece of Tupperware that's clean and some regular dishwasher soap. I'm going to put some water in here and then what we're going to do is scrub these down and dry them out. Now the water is a little bit warm. It's not boiling hot. You don't want it to be really hot because then it's going to start actually warping all of these pieces. But just some lukewarm water works good. I mean if cold water is all you got that works good too. And then what I'm going to do is just gently agitate this. On resin kits you have what's called a release agent that's put inside of the silicone mold itself before they pour the resin in. And what that does is allow these pieces to release from the mold without ruining the mold. They basically pop out. So if you picture how you grease a, a pan before you put in cake batter to make cake, it's basically the same situation here. And then what I'm gonna do is take a paintbrush, a nice clean paintbrush that's got some good stiff bristles to it. And I'm gonna start washing these down. Basically just painting all of this soapy water on it to make sure that we get into all these little cracks and crevices and that when it comes time to prime this, there's no release agent that's going to make the paint itself not stick once you go to paint it. So now we can just take our pieces, set them aside after we've given them a good brushing and a good wash. All right, so after we've gotten these all out of the soapy water, what I'm gonna end up having to do is rinse this off with lukewarm water get all that release agent off and I should be left with a nice clean surface. After everything's completely dried, now we are ready to paint. Now an interesting thing with Tamiya paints is the only primers they really make are in aerosol cans. I find they're really almost the exact same thing if not actually the exact same thing as just a regular gray acrylic flat base paint. So what I'm gonna use to primer this is just a simple, this is what, Sky Gray X19? I'm just gonna use this to prime this whole thing. Now mind you, it's been degreased with dishwasher soap, completely washed down. So now I have a completely clean, matte, flat, dry surface that is open and ready to accept any paint that I use for this. So what I'm gonna do now is prime everything in this Sky Gray. One thing to keep in mind, depending on the finish you're going for, if you want a really light finish on the model kit you're working on, use a very light primer. You don't want to start dark and then have to keep adding layer after layer of light paint in order to get the color you want. So start light and light. Start dark and dark. Let's get to priming. Something to keep in mind, when you go to paint these kits, or when I should say when you go to prime them, you could run into a situation where you find marks that you missed while you were doing the actual body work. How you combat that is, you can find high and low marks with the primer. So if you see all these parts here that still have primer on them, those are all low marks, which means this is not a smooth surface the way I want it to be. So what I would do in this instance is start to sand this down very gently, until I get all of this one smooth surface and all uniform color. Then I'll know for sure that this is all flat. So now you'll notice here after sanding, it's all nice and smooth. It's all one level surface and that's what I want throughout this whole kit. I don't want low spots, high spots any of that kind of stuff. I want it to be nice and smooth like this. Moving on. All redone, nice and smooth, no divots, no dips, no high spots, nothing like that. This is what you want for your finished look. So now from here, we're gonna start laying on some of the lighter bits that I want to be a little bit more vibrant before I start laying my top coat on here. So first thing we're gonna do is take some white, and we're going to go over the areas that I want highlighted. That starts now. So 
So if you'll notice here, I have just a little on that side, but that's the white that I have. From here, I'm gonna make sure that all the parts that are on that left side, where the light would shine normally, are what's gonna get highlighted now. gun right now with this light blue just a little bit and I'm just gonna go over some areas lightly just to give a little bit more effect once it comes time to do the sky blue top coat so as I mentioned before I want to dilute this a little bit more this is where having a good airbrush that atomizes paint well and mixing the paint properly comes into play if you don't do this step proper, it's not going to give the effect you want. So, what I'm going to start now is from a distance and start to cover over all the areas now that I've painted. And as you'll see, because the color is coming out opaque enough, you could still see that highlight shine through. And this is what I'm looking for. Got a nice light shading on one side, nice dark on the other. Not too dramatic because I don't want to go crazy with all of this, but I just want something to give a nice even pop to the finish. So now I'm going to go and do that same thing over this entire kit and I'll do a little time jump. If I want, I can leave everything like this but I still want to add more highlights to it. So what I'm going to do is take my light blue that I have here and I'm just going to lightly, very lightly highlight some areas with this just to give a bit more shine, a bit more pop and a bit more contrast. Now that I got the body colors pretty much how I want them for now, what I'm going to do is go over these clear eyes. You can use tinted clear coats to be able to still keep a clear effect on these eyes and give them a lot of depth, or you could just pretty much paint over them. You can even go as far as not painting this, but just painting the back end of it, and that will give it color that comes through the back end and gives it more depth while still maintaining a relatively clear look on the outside. I'm going to apply a custom color that I mixed a long time ago that has a purple and bluish pearl to it. This is a mix of different metallics, different clear coats, and basically gives me this purple color that I'm going for. It's gonna go on very opaque, so I'm still gonna have some nice depth with the uh, clear aspect of this, but it's not gonna be completely covered over like it would something like this. So if I paint just the back end here, you'll see what I mean. All I did was paint in behind, and now you've got that deep kind of look going there that plays off of all the different shapes in the back. If I go further and paint the top portions here and the sides, you're gonna have even more of a vibrant color. So you see there's a nice, clear, deep look to it. But what I'm gonna do is continue to layer on the sides of this and on the back and on the top without touching the front portion. What I'm gonna reserve for this part here now is a red clear coat over the front. And what that's gonna do now is give a lot more dynamic pop to this eye here. So now I'm gonna go over this with the red clear coat. And you're gonna see the nice effect that it gives to these eyes. You can see that up close. I think that looks pretty good. One thing you're going to want to keep in mind is the background. What color is the background going to be that shines through there? Since I want these eyes to be a little bit lighter, on the inside of the head portion, which is right here, this area back here, I'm going to spray in white just to give it a bit more lighter color on the eyes themselves once I go to lay it in there. After I've let this dry for a little bit of time, what I'm gonna do now is use my Citadel color here, Wasdaka Red. That's what I'm gonna use for doing all these little fleshy tones inside here. So what I'm gonna do now is start to, with the brush, 
take my time and start to paint every last little piece here. Now I could have had the other option too of going as far as taping all of this off and then spraying it with the airbrush and masking all of this. But I really didn't want to do that. I like the control that I have just using the brush here for this and I can get into these deep crevices where the airbrush really wasn't getting into deep enough. Let's start painting. Now that I have everything already painted, I did my brush work, I did my airbrushing, it's time to start thinking about assembly. And before I do that though, I want to point something out and give you a little bit of a tip. These ball bearings that come with the kit for these different uh, pieces on here, they're stainless steel and they're polished. And you may be wondering how in the world do I match this stainless steel polish look or this chrome look? And that's very simple. There's a pen out there called Liquid Chrome and it's made from a company called Molotov. Now what you do with these is basically pump the ink out and you really just start to draw on whatever it is that you want to chrome or you want to give that polished look. It's now starting to take on that stainless steel or chrome look. Now you've got yourself a shiny piece that looks like metal. And now we'll match this stainless steel ball pretty nicely now the only catch with this stuff is it takes a long time to dry i normally like to give it about a day or so to dry completely and even so you don't want to get the oils from your fingers on it because it can tarnish this look so once it's on pretty much you can't touch it anymore or you don't want to ever try to touch it anymore because you could ruin the finish so what i'm going to do now is start to assemble everything and i'm going to do so or i should say i'm going to start adhering everything with super glue now that i have this painted and all assembled what i want to do now is actually darken these colors just a little bit and highlight all these fleshy tones now there's various ways of doing that. Uh, I would not suggest going ahead and taking black and starting to shade in here at this point because then it's not really going to look right. But what you can do is take some panel line accent color. Tamiya makes this stuff. What it does is exactly that. It highlights different grooves and different things that are in the kit texturally like these areas up here and it makes them stand out more. It fills in all these areas with whatever this panel line accent color is. It comes in gray, brown, black. I'm not gonna use this for this. What I'm gonna do is darken the entire kit now a bit and I'm gonna use some X19 Tamiya Smoke Clear Coat. What this stuff is gonna do is darken shade by shade. As many coats as I do is as dark as this is going to get. And I'm gonna spray over this as the top coat and you're gonna see this stuff alone will enhance a little bit of these edges a bit more. And as you can see, the kit is darkening as I go along with this smoke clear coat. It gives it a bit more of a contrasted look. But I don't want to overdo it because if I overdo this, then I'm going to completely change the tone to something I don't want. So with smoke clear coat, unless you're really trying to darken colors a lot and salvage something, I would not go too much with it. It is going to tint the final color, as you'll see here, but it also adds a bit more contrast, as well as giving that protective finished coat. One thing you're going to want to try to remember here is you want everything to match up. So when you're doing these coats, you want to keep the coats similar to all the other body parts that are not coated at the moment. You can always go over this again with a regular clear coat just to give it that extra bit. That's about where I want it to be now. You'll see the great color contrast now when it comes to that and that. So again, I want to make sure that everything matches. And when doing this kind of clear coat, you kind of want to keep even color coverage because if you let it sit on one spot for too long, it's going to darken that area in a non-uniform way. And that is not what we're going for. We don't want to leave spots on this kit. 
And now what I'm going to do is turn on my fan and let all this dry about maybe 10 minutes under the fan. This way, everything will be good enough that I can handle it, not ruin it, not put thumb marks in it, or any of that kind of stuff. So I'll be back in a few. And now that we've come to the end of our little resin kit journey, my pet dirt is going to move aside and show you the Guyver kit that we just finished building. I think at this point is where we're going to do a little, like, you know, turntable montage, music, and all sorts of cool stuff. So let's start that right now. So yeah, this is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this journey from last week till this week and getting this kit done. Hopefully so, any fears or apprehensions you may have had about doing a resin kit for yourself have kind of subsided a bit or completely gone away. I highly encourage you to try these kits. They're fun to do. They are a little bit of a challenge sometimes depending on what kits you choose to build, but the end results speak for themselves and I think you will be very happy. And not to mention too, it's gonna to open up the opportunity for doing resin conversion kits on Gundam kits. Still have that Barbatos over there. Now, some of you have been asking me why I've had no more off-topic videos. I've only done two of them and those were in regards to my tarantulas. Well, that's because plain and simple, I haven't had the time. But I have been getting asked frequently throughout the years how I go about making these mounts right here. Insects. And I think that is going to be one of the off-topic videos coming up in the future. I'll show you how to buy these things, where to get them, how to prepare them, how to pin them, how to mount them, how to get them inside these frames like this, or any other types of frames for that matter. But that'll come up eventually. If you're interested in that, let me know down below. But again, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to like, subscribe, share, Hit that bell icon to get notified of any future uploads and comment below if there's anything else you want to see on future videos or if you have any questions on these past videos I've just done. With that, my pet dirt has a special surprise for you. Bye!